We've got the Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifolio. It's the end of an era. Get it before it's gone. I'm definitely holding on for this one, Andrea. I'm definitely holding on. Okay, punch it. Here we go. Oh, God, I love that sound. It just gets me excited. Well, you know what? We're gonna tell you more about the demise of this particular model yeah. in a moment. Right now, what is under the hood of this Quattrofolio? A 2.9 liter twin turbo V6 with an eight speed automatic transmission, 505 horsepower and 443 pound feet of torque. This is a rear wheel drive model and premium fuel is required. This is the top banana if you want a Julia. What are the key standard features? The Quadrifolio comes with a 12 inch digital driver display, an 8.8 .8 inch touchscreen, wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, a wireless charger, a 14 speaker Harman Kardon sound system, heated sport leather seats, a heated steering wheel, heated rear seats, adaptive cruise control, forward collision warning, and a remote start system. We have a switch here that says DNA. There's one extra setting. What are we going to put it in? Got to put it in. Ask for subscribe. And if you can hit that notification bell, you'll be notified when all of our reviews drop and then you can watch them. And we do this, the Cup of Car Review twice a week. The first one drops on Wednesday. We put another one out on Saturday. So make sure to like and subscribe, but also follow along on Instagram. It's motormouth underscore Andrea to see what's going on behind the scenes. For me, it's motormouth underscore auto. And the links are below the like button. So it kind of went like this, Andrea. Uh, we have the Quadro for, yes, I'll take it. <laughs> the email came in and I'm like, yes, we'll take it. How can you resist it? First off, it's fabulous. And secondly, it's the last year for the Quadrifolio. Mm. Yeah, so what's happening is Alpha is switching to EVs in a few years. We're going to talk more about this in questions, coffee and cars. And um, they're discontinuing this particular model. This is the last year for it. It's a very pointy end of the stick, Andrea. I don't think they sell a lot. I don't no. think there's a lot of people interested, but for those that are, man, this is a special car. For sure. So we love the regular Julia because it is just a fantastic car to drive every single day. And you would think with this top performance spec, it would beat you up. Are you finding it's easy to live with every day? I find it easy to live with every day if I'm in the driver's side. I find the passenger side, it does beat you up a bit, which makes sense. This is a driver enthusiast sports sedan. And um, I really like it, but I prefer just to be a single passenger in this and drive it, unless Zach doesn't mind being a passenger. Yeah, but I find when you put it in, it's sort of, uh, what does N stand for again? Natural. When it's natural uh, state. Yeah. The suspension does a great job of soaking up the bumps, yeah. even with a performance suspension and big wheels and tires. I'm, I'm quite happy to be sitting over here. The 2024 model upgrades the active torque limited slip differential to operate mechanically, which um, is a great feature for 2024. And then this DNA drive mode select also has race mode for the Quadrifolio. So I was talking to a colleague of ours and saying I was going to pick up this car. And I said, I love getting an Alpha. And he had never driven an Alpha Romeo. And I said, man, are you missing out? There's something about the way it feels. Yeah. The suspension we've talked about, but it's really the steering. Well, the steering, you know, you take it on a twisty road and it's wonderful. It has great feedback, it's precise, and it's not too heavy, but it just does the job right. I mean, I just have a hard time explaining how good it is. It's very precise, but it's also uh, a connected car. Like you feel everything. And yeah. if you're buying a performance car, you don't want to be insulated from the road and from what the front wheels are doing. And this gives you great feedback to the driver. So even for the passenger, it's great, but it's especially good for the driver. I find being on the highway, it actually is quite quiet in the cabin. We're on the highway now. I think it does a pretty good job I of isolating that. the noise. I can, okay, now not give it a punch. We've got the sound, but if you think about it, the cabin still remains quiet here, but you've got this growl and yeah. this snap crackle pop to it, uh, which who doesn't want with a performance sedan, right? Because when you put it in D, that opens up the exhaust baffles. Mm -hmm. When you put it in N, 
the baffles are off. I love it. So you know when you got a good design, you leave it alone and you don't mess with it. And I would say Alpha has something good going here, so they don't have the need to mess with it. And they didn't mess with it. They have done maybe small tweaks along the way. I think it's just such a pretty looking vehicle. It's one that you park and you turn around and you look at and you admire. I like all the bold colors that Alfa Romeo goes with. We've got this bright blue, we can get red, couple green options. And uh, I think when you drive a performance sports sedan, it's nice to have a bold color. I'd go with one of the greens. I think these cars look great in green. For 2024, Alfa Romeo has tweaked the headlamps and the tail lamps. Come standard with LED headlamps, LED tail lamps. You've got 19 inch wheels. There's a temporary spare tire. And you can see that the exterior has some black exterior accents, dual exhaust pipes. I think it looks pretty cool. And you notice on this model, they have the extended uh, side skirts and some carbon fiber added. Uh, the hood is carbon fiber, Andrew. Mm -hmm. When you lift it up, you can see underneath. I mean, that's uh, you're paying a lot for this car, but you actually get it in some details. Yeah. So don't touch the outside. They got that perfected. What they could work on, though, is the inside. And it really centers around the infotainment screen. This is really looking old and dated. It is not uh, the Chrysler or the Stellantis Uconnect system. It's Alfa Romeo's own thing, and it's not good. Yeah, I, I find it to be quite laggy unless you pair it to Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. It is wired, but it does move things along. Now, we did initially plug it into the USB-A port here in the front. It doesn't work, but there's a C and an A inside here, and that that's where you will find wired Android Auto or Apple CarPlay will connect for you. I like the simplicity of the interior and the carbon fiber. There's no high gloss piano black, but definitely the technology is outdated. Yeah, and, and they haven't really changed much of this over the years. They did do a little refresh in the center console yeah. a couple of years ago, but if you got a regular Julia and this, the real difference is the, the seats, of course, and uh, the carbon fiber, but I love that car. I love the regular two liter and yeah. it, the more I drive this car the more I would just get that. Yeah I don't think there's any need to get the Quadrifoglio it's just that it's a unique and special vehicle with a load of power but I would be quite happy with the regular Julia as well as my daily driver. The sport seats really cradle you. I find them quite comfortable. We've got a black interior and that is the only option on this model that's available which I think is too bad because I always find that the green exterior with that tan oh, yeah, that would interior look is beautiful. No sunroof either. No there's no sunroof on this model it's just not available being a performance vehicle. Now one upgrade for 2024 is it now comes with a 12 inch digital driver yeah, display. I noticed that. Yeah. yeah. But that's I thought it was my it. imagination. I'm like I don't remember that. But there it is. So that's technology they've added. The infotainment screen, it needed this like yesterday. Now the wireless charger you'll find at the center console here where you've got your storage. I do find the door pockets to be tiny. I'm not even sure that I can fit a water bottle in there. It is just so narrow. Um, it's got this little round space, and I was thinking, is it for an espresso or no, what? But we've been to Italy, Andrea. You don't drink espresso in your car. You always stop and sit in a cafe yeah. and take it easy. Yes. No rush. What no. do you like? What do you like? No taking a coffee to go. But anyway, it is tiny. Um, I, I think it's an interesting interior because it's simple and clean, but- um, It's showing its age. Showing its age. Well, here's me getting in the back seat. It's a bit of an optical illusion because it doesn't look like it has much leg space, but your butt is way down in a bucket seat. So your leg room, your knee room anyway, is actually not that bad. Headrooms are at a bit of a premium, but it is comfortable once you're in. Comparing the Julia Quadrifoglio to the BMW M3, the Julia has 42.4 inches of front row legroom, which is almost an inch bigger than the BMW. Second row legroom for the Julia is 35.1 inches. The M3 has half an inch more space. 
Lifting the truck, this is a compact luxury sedan, so you don't get a ton of room. How does it stack up? Cargo space for the Julia is 13.4 cubic feet. The BMW does offer a little more storage. Not a cappuccino, but we'll get to it anyway. Americano. Time now for questions, coffee, and cars. Your questions from Instagram. Great styling and performance from a unique brand on its last year. Does this have the makings of a future collector car? Um, yes, it does have the makings. It's got all the hallmarks. It's uh, low production. Mm -hmm. You are not going to see many on the road. I've seen one in the city of Vancouver, and this is luxury car capital, yeah. I would say, maybe even of North America. Um, so you don't see them new, and no. in the used market, they're going to be hard to find. The issue that you have with anything that's this powerful, this unique, and this expensive is as they get older, they're going to have a major depreciation curve like this, mm -hmm. and then it might start to come up, but it's the parts. It's getting the parts for this car 10, 15 years from now. I mean, I think it's going to be a collector vehicle for sure. Like Zach said, there's not many made. Most of the ones that I see in Vancouver are the two liter. They're mm -hmm. not even the quadrifolio. So I believe this is a special vehicle. And I think, as I said off the top, there's a real emotional connection to a vehicle like this with such an amazing engaging drive. So, I think it's going to be many years, many years before maybe it's... Maybe down the road. Yeah, and because they, the, all, all high-end cars like this go like this in, in terms of value, mm -hmm. and then eventually they start to come up. But I follow a guy in, in Germany that's redoing a Maserati right now, and the car is actually available for sale. Mm. He can't get parts for it. Yeah, Same company. Saying that. Yeah. And also, I think that you need a good mechanic. You need somebody who knows <laughs> how to work on an Alfa Romeo. If you buy this later on, uh, it just makes sense. If you could only have one, what are you buying between this and the Lexus IS 500 F Sport? Specifically, which is the more engaging driver's experience? Okay. Most definitely. Okay, wait, don't say it. Don't say it. We're going to do three, two, one. You ready? Okay. Okay. Three, two, one. Quadrifolio. Alfa Romeo. For sure, hands down. This is just so fun. But then you go back to reliability again. And Lexus, you And know, resale value. Yeah. So it's it's really what you want. We didn't love the eight-speed in, um, in the IS. Uh, we found that it was really laggy and slow to downshift and get some fun out of the V8. This is just baked in. You get it. It's good to go right out of the box. And really with the IS, I would get the V6. I actually preferred that model over the V8. Love the show. I own a 2022 Julia TI, two liter and love it. Always love the QV, but it's a bit out of my price range. Will there be a Julia with the two liter engine for 2025? You go, go on. I'm drinking coffee over okay. here. The segment's called Questions, yes, Coffee and Cars. Yes. And I don't know if you notice this, but I'm always the one drinking the coffee. because I've got to read the question. Mm -hmm. So I can't have coffee in my mouth. Yeah, it is. And, you know, I actually felt if Alfa Romeo plans to go all electric by 2027, well, what are they going to sell in the meantime? They've got to sell something. So it makes sense to see that the two liter is carried over for 2025. I can see their logic. They're going to go, let's get rid of the low volume car that uh, not many people buy. So they're getting rid of this one. And then the two liter, in, in my opinion, as we said earlier, for me and what I need, that's all the car I need. And I would be quite happy to get it. Uh, it's staying for the time being. Frankly, I'm really disappointed the Quadrifolio is going, but at least we can get it on the use market whenever we it's want. A, it's a but future I, collectible, I'm Andrea. Just, <laughs> I, I'm just sad about it. I, I don't know. I'm, I, I just can't believe it. And now it's time for our hot topic. What's this one, Andrea? Always thought this was one of the most attractive vehicles made and performance-wise looks like it matches the looks. Now, how about that reliability? Hmm. Well, every single hot topic for an Alfa Romeo is the same. How's the quality? I don't want to talk about quality just yet. I want to talk about how do people like this? Hmm. And they recently did the JD Power Appeal Study and Alfa Romeo scored high because people like the car they bought. So there's the whole pain pleasure. People like this. They're willing to put up with some trips to the dealer. Yeah, it's unfortunate. It has a below average reliability score. But people who own an Alfa Romeo, whether it's the Julia 
or it's the Stelvio, they rave about it. They tell us and please, if you own one, type below. They say it's reliable mm -hmm. and they've had no issues with it and they absolutely love it. Yeah, I we get, we that's the feedback we get. I have one, I love it. That's the thing is, the peel is high. Once you sit behind the wheel, yeah. maybe not for the passenger, <laughs> but once you sit behind this wheel and you drive this, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. All right, let's get into the vital stats of this Alfa Romeo. Let's start with pricing. In Canada, the Julia Quadrifolio starts at just under $100,000. And in the U.S., it's just over $83,500. Here's the fuel economy, 13.5 liters per 100 kilometer city, 9.3 on the highway. At 17 miles per gallon city, 25 miles per gallon highway. Alfa Romeo offers a warranty of four years, 80,000 kilometers or 50,000 miles. In the United States, complimentary maintenance is covered for one year or 10,000 miles. So you want a high performance luxury sedan. What else can you choose? For your consideration, four vehicles for you to consider. Up first is the Cadillac CT4 Blackwing with a 3.6 liter twin turbo V6, 472 horsepower and a starting price of $74,000. The BMW M3 with a 3 liter twin turbo inline 6, 473 horsepower and a starting price over 92 grand. The Mercedes-Benz AMG C43 sedan with a 2 liter turbo 4 with hybrid drive, 402 horsepower and a starting price over $82,000. The Audi RS5 Sportback with a 2.9 liter turbo V6, 444 horsepower and a starting price over $98,000. So there are four high performance cars for you to consider. Lightning round, two things we like, two things we'd like to see improved. Love the way that this handles. Once you drive one of these cars, it's kind of addictive. What I'd like to see is an improved infotainment system in here. I'd like to see them keep this. Mm. That's not going to happen. No. So there you go. It's the Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio. What do you think of that? Thanks for watching. If you like what you see, subscribe and we'll see you next time.